Howdy friends, Russell here coming to you from the shop. What we got here is a, a Jeep 4 liter motor we picked up out of the junkyard. Um, as many of y'all know, uh, I've got an 86 CJ7. Um, I also have a 96 uh, Jeep XJ. Um, and in some previous videos, uh, which I'll, I'll link one up here, I did a refresh on a 4 liter uh, to put into the CJ7. I picked this motor up to do kind of a similar refresh to put into my XJ and upon further reflection have decided I'm going to do a video, an engine rebuild series for you guys. We're going to do a full on rebuild of this engine. I'm going to document it all the way uh, through, through video as much as I can. Um, and we're going to build this not as a rebuilt 4 liter, but we're going to build a 4.7 liter stroker. Um, and then this motor will go into the CJ7. Um, the heart of a 4.7 stroker is the 258 crank from the, uh, from the early, uh, you know, from like the, the 4.2 liter. So uh, up until 87, 88, 90, I think they were still running 4.2s in the Wranglers. The crank you really want to have is the 12 counterweight crank from the 81 prior. Um, a lot of inertial mass, a uh, very stiff crank. I happen to have one of those cranks. So today we're going to be, we're, I'm going to take it to down in the machine shop so we can get it inspected, um, trued if necessary, turned and prepared. Already started to order parts. We'll document that as we go uh, when I get parts in. Um, but yeah, we're going to start a, a, an engine rebuild series, so this is the first video of that engine rebuild series for the 4.7 Stroker. Um, the, the base that we're going to use is a 4 liter out of a 1996 Jeep Cherokee, so it's an NVH block, uh, so it's got a stiffer webbing in it and has a crank girdle, and y'all will see all that when we disassemble this motor. Um, so get the crank to the machine shop. Second thing we'll do is we'll get the, we'll get this one disassembled and uh, get the head off to the machine shop. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to doing this series. Um, let me know in the comments, uh, specifically what y'all want to see as far as the rebuild goes. Um, at the end of this video, towards the end of this video, we'll have i uh, I'll, I'll have a picture of the crank. Or uh, not a picture, but a quick video of the crank. Um, yeah, this is going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to zoom in, give you all a good look. We'll take a quick walk around the 4 liter. Um, and then I'll show you all the crank, and then we'll wrap this one up. We're gonna, this is going to be a real short video. So standard um, Jeep Mopar Chrysler 4 liter uh, was used in the 91 actually earlier than that the block in this configuration was used from 96 on in the Cherokee and the Wrangler um, all the way up to the end of production life in 2006 um, earlier versions of the 4 liter didn't have this NVH configuration and it was used up to 95 from 91 to 95 with this cylinder this this uh, type of high flow head earlier versions um, had a uh, didn't have the high output head on it um, some of the things that will change when we configure it to put in the CJ7, um, it'll get a different water pump um, because the pulley is different. It'll get a different AC bracket because in a Cherokee, this is actually where the fan goes. Um, power steering pulley or configuration will stay the same. Um, we actually will have a different header to put on it. Um, map center will move. But this is the motor we picked up. Uh, supposedly it only has 180,000 miles on it. I know it was well maintained because this is a replacement header, and I don't know I don't know why they decided to junk the car. But uh, this header's been replaced, so they were they were maintaining this engine really well. Okay, um, okay, back to the engine. Some of the other things we'll swap over. Uh, like I said, the AC the AC bracket between this. Uh, going in the CJ and going in the XJ will change as well as the alternator bracket set. So we'll actually, this stuff uh, will get pulled off and we'll swap the stuff out of the CJ into it to match it up. Um, 
I will retain the oil filter adapter set um, going into the CJ. I, I like while it, it's, it creates a potential leak point, it allows us to run a much larger filter. And y'all know how I, I like large filters. So this is the motor that we're gonna build off of. That'll be a lot of fun. We'll, uh, next video, we'll start tearing it down. And uh, as far as today, we'll, uh, we'll get that crank off. All right, so here's the crank we're gonna use for that engine build. Um, it came out of a pre-81 CJ uh, 4.2 liter, so it's the stroker crank. Fully 12 counterweights. This crank weighs over 65 pounds. Um, of course, it's a long snout crank, so we'll have that machine down by 10 millimeters to use with a serpentine belt pulley. Um, I've got to take it to the machine shop because uh, it's been sitting here exposed for eh, three years or so. Um, and we'll get it polished, under, you know, undersized if needed, camphor all the oil holes and get it balanced out. So this is going to be the heart. This is going to be the heart of that 4.6 liter we build. Let me get it to the machine shop. Uh, this is something I've been thinking about for several years uh, regarding my both my XJ and my CJ that I was going to have to do engine rebuild at some point. So I'd already started collecting parts. Um, we've already got the crank that I'm using, the 12 counterweight uh, pre-81 258 crank. It's already off at the machine shop. And, uh, uh, and we've already started collecting parts. Um, I've got, so what I already have on hand, I've got uh, milling oil pumps, both the standard uh, volume and a high volume. Um, we've already got, we've already got our head bolts. Um, I've got numerous different gasket sets, uh, head gaskets, valve cover gaskets, full engine sets, uh, ready to go. Uh, multiple different head gaskets because uh, as we build this stroker engine up, um, how much deck clearance we end up with on final assembly will determine which gasket that I use um, on the final assembly of the engine. Um, I, I, as far as the head goes, we are going to replace the valve springs. They're getting harder to find for these Jeep motors, so I did manage to source a brand new set of valve springs. Um, brand new Rollmaster time and chain set. Can't, I can't say enough about these time and chain sets. I've been using Rollmaster timing chains on everything that I can use them on um, for years. Fortunately, they still make them for the Jeep. Uh, it's just a little bit harder to get it because they are made in Australia, so there's not really too many distributors here in the U.S. Um, I've also I've got a choice of two different camshafts when we build this motor. Um, I've got a melling replacement, uh, what we call the OBD2 cam, so it's a 96 and up camshaft. It um, has a pretty mild profile on it, but it is a dual pattern cam to help with exhaust scavenging. I also Several years ago, before they all disappeared, I managed to find a Mopar purple cam. This is the 229 cam. Um, and it's got about, I believe it's 440 lift net. Um, we're going to use that cam. I think we're probably going to use that cam with uh, one to seven rockers. So we'll actually end up with about a 463 lift, uh, which is just inside what these valve springs will handle. Um, a little bit more about the engine we're building. So we're going to use a 250, 258 crank. We're going to 30 overbore, um, and I'm using. Um, I, I've already. I'm already in talks with uh, Russ Potinger out at uh, Bishop Buell Racing out in California, and we're going to run a set of his custom pistons, uh, probably a 26 or 27 millimeter dish in them. They're set up, the pistons are custom made to be zero deck, so we don't have to deck the block. The pistons are set at zero deck. So we'll have like a 49 or 48 quench, which would be a really tight quench um, between the, the piston and the head. 
and, uh, and a set of uh, his custom scat rods. So the balance pads on the rods are basically ground away because you don't need them anyway. Um, so I'm already in talks with him about setting all that up as, as well. So I'm from Russ, from Bishop Buell Racing, Russ Potinger. I'm going to get pistons, rods, piston pins. We're going to go full floating pins, um, the roller rockers, and as well as a 10 millimeter spacer that will go on the front of the crank so that it will work with the serpentine pulley. Uh, the 258 cranks were 10 millimeters longer uh, than the 40 cranks and were so we're going to use a 258 crank and a 40 engine and 40 pulley so you've got to space it out. I don't want to machine the end of the crank off. So and that's it for today. Um, I've already got the crank uh, out to the machine shop. Um, <laughs> none of the machine shops within 30 miles actually turn cranks. So everyone that I went, everyone that I went and talked to was like, oh yeah, we send it off to so and so. We send it off to so and so. So um, I've got the machine shop lined up to bore the block. Um, and I've got the crank off. So if y'all like this content, go ahead and hit like, hit subscribe, hit that bell icon for future notifications. And as always, there's more to follow.